All right, so ask Reddit thread. What's your best mind fuck question? Uh, also take this opportunity real quick to say, if you have something on Reddit you want me to read, make sure you put a link to it if you want me to read it because I had some suggestions but I can actually uh, find the stories you wanted me to read. So links, links, and there's a good chance I'll read it. Four chance stuff too, or just a picture or whatever. Okay, so on to the actual thing. Uh, how many random people's vacations photos am I in? I actually thought that too. <laughs> it's like I used to work at Disney and work in high volume restaurant right now where people constantly take pictures. I know for a fact I'm in the background of a lot of them and I'm staring straight at the camera. Start wearing a QR code button. A QR code could rickroll anyone who scans it in a discussion. Reminds me of this photo. <laughs> it reminds me of my husband and wife that realized they were in each other's Disney World pictures from vacations when they were children. Oh, the husband and wife. Story here. I'm not really good at formatting, so sorry if it didn't work. Huh. Uh, my friend told Mai that the study of physics is actually atoms trying to understand themselves. That twisted my brain. Wow, that's true. Hydrogen is a colorless, odorless gas, which, if left alone in large enough quantities for long enough, will begin to think about itself. Hydrogen. Uh, how do you know that your memories are true? Really, anything to do with memory will mess your head if you think about it for too long. It's basically the only way we have to define reality, and it's provably unreliable. It's definitely unreliable. It's worse when you think about how many people have gone to jail on little more than witness testimony. I saw a documentary once where they got volunteers to participate in a TV show. Prior to filming, they went to a pub together with the producer. While in the pub, a man burst in and violently attacked the producer. It was all staged, as were the police interviews that followed. They tested the accuracy of people's witness statements by asking them what color shirt the guy wore. There were a scary amount of inaccuracies and falsehoods. I assume this was based on actual psychological experiment. It was very interesting slash scary. Edit. Of course, I could remember this completely wrong. <laughs> I think I've seen something like that before. Uh, I asked our French teacher, she was French born but had been living in England most of her adult life, which language she thinks in. She looked like, wait, she looked like her head was about to turn inside out which language she thinks in. Uh, I've heard people talk about this before. It's usually the language I speak the most, even if it's not their native. <clears throat> I asked my cousin the same. She is completely bilingual. She just said she thinks in both languages. Sometimes one language is not adequate to describe a situation, but the other is. Makes sense. Our French teacher used to prefer swearing in English, probably because it expressed her discount better. There is no other word as versatile and universal as the word fuck that I can think of. And my husband found out our car needed fix and he said, Mother fuck, before he realized it. The mechanic who looked at it just started laughing and said it Japanese. I didn't realize people actually said that. I thought it was just in movies, and then he made us help make sure he was saying it correctly and didn't charge us for checking out the car. <laughs> yeah, your knowledge was batterable as a service. How fascinating. That's funny here. Completely bilingual here too, English and French. If I'm thinking of a situation surrounded by my French friends or French people, then I'll think in French. If I'm thinking of a situation with English people, I'll think in English. Same goes for dreams. Weirdly, some things are stuck in French, like timetables. I was schooled in France. No matter what I do, I have to do the timetables in my head in French. Hmm. Either there has always been something, or at one point there was nothing. Both of these scenarios are unfathomable and seem impossible, but clearly at least one of them isn't. How do you explain that? I just watched this, as some people suggested, and it seems to explain a lot. What is this? Universe from nothing. Maybe I'll have to watch that later. <laughs> oh wait, one of these is... It's funny, isn't it? We can easily grasp the concept of no end to a story. Our universe will die and be reborn again and again, and we accept that. 
The concept of having a story with no beginning, though, is what messes with us. At some point, the story had to start, right? So there is always something, and there is no beginning. If there was nothing at what point, then what existed before that to cause a something? Good question. The correct answer is it was Jesus. Depending on, on who you ask, actually, that is a, a, a good question. If you have an old wooden boat, and slowly over the years you replace pieces of wood until every piece has been replaced, is it a new boat or the same boat? If you say the same boat, then what if you took all the old pieces of wood and built the boat? Is that a new boat? You just described my PC. <laughs> I still have the same power cord in mine from 20 years ago. Everything else was slowly replaced piece by piece. Do crabs think fish can fly? Do crabs think lobsters are mermaids? Hmm, good question. How many wild birds do you think we've seen twice? I actually really like this one. And actually, it's probably a lot more than you think. Most birds you're likely to see have fairly small territories. The birds in your garden are likely to be the same individuals day to day. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I should mark one some of these days. I'm a blue jay. Uh, if you have a feeder in your yard or live near a popular nesting area, probably a lot. I've seen the same scrub jay visit for nine years. I give her peanuts sometimes, but they have really distinctive personalities. So it's obvious when she shows up. Maybe that's cheating. Huh. It is crazy how saying sentences backwards create backwards sentences, saying how crazy it is. Go hang a salami. I'm a lasagna hog. Do geese see God? Do nine men interpret? Nine men, I nod. Wait. Go anagus. Wait. Hog lasagna, a hey, I'm pooping is a sign I poop. Poop I sign a is pooping. What? <laughs> okay. Uh, I T T mind kiss questions. Don't tease us. Give us a mind fuck question. Is it penis length that matters or is it vagina death? Girth. Uh, Q is just the letter followed by four silent letters. I made it a question. Q is just the letter followed by four silent letters. Oh, that's so true. They're not silent, they're waiting for their turns to speak. <laughs> this guy again. <laughs> oh, wow. It always fucks up by saying a weird jumble of noises that ends up sounding like Q. Uh, what if I'm not to Lee all year, but I want a lump of coal for Christmas? Santa uses the coal to burn your house down. Uh, if I'm prepared to pay $9.99 for something, I'd be prepared to pay $10 for it as well. I'd also be prepared to pay ten oh one and ten oh two and so on. Where does this stop? When I'm always prepared to pay an extra cent? I had a similar dilemma when buying my first SSD. Only 35, 5, no, 4, 5 euros. More, I had a 64 GB model. Oh, for another 5 euros, I have one with better read speed. Oh, for another 5 euro, I have one that's MLC and not TLC. Oh, for another 5 euro, I have a 128 GB model. Something like that. Perhaps that's the company's intention. It stops at 10.50 when I realized the retail price was still 9.99. I was getting swindled. People seem mind fucked a lot of the time when I simply ask them, "Why do you think that?" My uncle taught me to ask this and think about it myself when I was young, and it changed the way I look at people and opinions. Going to ask my kids this when they get an appropriate age. Similarly, kids have the right of it when they never stop asking why. There's always another why and continuing to ask it may be annoying, but it leads to knowledge. It always pictures... I always picture detectives, scientists, etc. as kids who just never stopped asking why. You see, my nephew is three, and he only ever asks why when he's crying and whining about wanting something unreasonable. Like, why... Uh, why can't I go outside and ride my, my bike in the rain? 
Uh, because you'll get sick. Why? Uh, because of the rain. Why? He'll just keep asking why and why. You see, that that's that's when he gets annoyed and you tell him to, you know, shut up. <laughs> but I, I get the sentiment to it. It's like, what if they're asking something legitimate and not just being an annoying brat? Uh, why is it that we can easily identify ourselves through a mirror but see a completely different us in a picture? Usually see yourself every morning in the mirror with the same light and same shadows. Your brain gets used to this looks. Since seeing yourself in other lighting circumstances doesn't happen often. Here you see how different a face looks with only changing the position of a light source. Intensity, diffusion, hue, size, and distance from a light source affect the look substantially as well. Whoa. It's going too fast though. The image in the mirror is relatively horizontal, so all your facial irregularities, which you are used to, are on the wrong side. If you look at photos which aren't reversed and make you think you look weird, when you see yourself in the mirror, you see a 3D image with your depth perception. Depth perception. On the other hand, a photo is usually two-dimensional and flat. When looking in the mirror, you're always seeing yourself with a fixed focal length and field of view of your eyes at the same distance every day. Camera lenses, though, have various focal lengths. They affect the perceptive disorders of your face depending on the distance between you and the camera, as seen in this example. Depending on how close and far away they are. Camera lenses, though, have various focus lengths. They affect the perspective distortions of your face depending on the distance between you and the camera. Oh, so you can look better if you're further away from the camera, huh? In the mirror, you're always visible from front side only. On photos, there's always a slightly different vertical and horizontal angle of point of view which you are not used to seeing in the mirror. All of these together create the effect of seeing a strange self in photos. It helps a lot to get more self-conscious about your look in photos. If you imagine that all the people that you see in real life and in photos pretty much perceive you the same way as you perceive yourself when looking in the mirror, you get used to look exactly how you got used to your look in the mirror. If they'd see a mirror picture of you, it probably would look unusual to them. So don't worry, you look great. That light source gif is the only mind fuck I've seen in this thread. Uh, if you buy DiGiorno pizza on Amazon and it's delivered to your house, is it still DiGiorno? And did you tip the FedEx guy that brings it? And if you're a sexy housewife that doesn't have money for a tip, does it still turn into a porno? DiGiorno, no. DiPorno. Uh, do you realize in four years, 30 years ago will be the 90s? What? I guess that's true if you count 1999. But 20 years and a few days ago from then will also have been the 90s, so it's not all that bad. But it still feels like 10 years ago and probably still will in 2020. I still think of everything like it's 2010. Uh, was just talking to my teenage nephews about this. If something has come out since 2009, I will still consider it new, like brand new. They were telling me their uncle, wait, their other uncle, John Mulaney, and he said, is this new? If he's, wait, if he's new, I haven't heard of him. The nephew say no, at the same time their dad and I say yes. They're like, what do you mean? He's been around forever. His first album came out at 09, so I said, yeah guys, but we function on adult time. And you guys are still growing up, so six years ago you were 10 and 7. You were totally different people. Six years ago, we were all pretty much exactly who we are now, and it doesn't feel that long ago. Okay, I think I got what he's saying, I just didn't read it right. That makes sense. Because what people do in relationships is going well, they meet each other's parents. And I've never understood that. I've never been with my girlfriend and thought, oh, honey, tonight's going great. But did you know what would make it perfect? Charles and Ellen Maloney. Let's get them in the mix. <laughs> We've been going pretty hot and heavy lately. I think it's time we bring in two older Catholic people. What? <laughs> F. God damn it. Uh, if a cyclops closes its eye, is it a wink or a blink? If a... Heresy is driving a dead body, 
can it drive in the carpool lane? Fehurs? The fuck is that? Uh, does the teacher have the right to give homework to a homeless kid? If Jimmy cracked corn and nobody cared, why is there a song about it? More of a statement, but still a good one. No rules without an exception, except this one. The past is every moment before the present, and the future is every moment after the present. So, is there any real present besides the exact moment you're in right now? Like, try to think of a thought in the present right now. The moment you think of it, that thought you just had is in the past. Yeah, 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 I get it. How quickly do you think you can find out what is so unusual about this paragraph? It looks so ordinary. You would think nothing is wrong with it at all, in fact. Nothing is, but is it unusual? Why? If you study it and think about it, you may find out, but I'm not going to assist you in any way. You must do it without coaching. No doubt, if you work at it for long, it will dawn on you. Who knows? Go to work and try out your skill. Par is about half an hour. Now write another one using the same rules, but without any of the forms to be. Thank you, ninth grade English teacher. This is called a lipogram. Someone wrote an entire novel like this. Wait, are there no E's in it? Hmm. Said novel is a void, which is actually based around the disappearance of Aiton Val. What's even more impressive is that it was then translated from French, which was written without an E into English, without using an E, and didn't really lose the quantities of the original work. There are no the and a words. Articles is the term you're looking for. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Interesting.